Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is right, I'm going to show you how to make guesses in the lab. Now, the reason why I want to do this is so that the next time you go to the chem lab and you start to do your QA experiment, uh, you will know more or less what gas you are testing for or what gas to test for and what gases to expect. You see, in our syllabus, right, there are only about five or six gases that are tested. And so I think if you know how to make all these gases in the chem lab, it gives you like a one up. No, so the first guess I'm going to start with is oxygen gas. Now, to make oxygen gas, all right, um, the chemical reaction really is this. It's hydrogen peroxide breaking down, undergoing decomposition to form water and oxygen gas. Now, what you will expect in the chem lab for this is what? Uh, you'll be given hydrogen peroxide, which is a colorless solution, and manganese oxide, which is a catalyst. It will speed up the reaction, and that's a black solid. So what I'm trying to say here is this. If you're given a, a colorless solution, let me just draw it. If you're given a colorless solution, and you're asked to add in some black solid, all right, and you notice the black solid sinks to the bottom, okay, catalyst will not take part in the reaction, so it sinks to the bottom, and immediately you see effervescence, all right, I will probably test for oxygen gas. So use a light, uh, use a glowing splint and see if it rekindles. Of course, if it if it doesn't work, then we're going to try something else. Like. But I would say in general, um, for a black solid, it's probably manganese oxide. All right. Uh, sometimes if you're so-called uh, unlucky, then it's a different experiment altogether. The black solid could be copper oxide. But you will know this for sure when you when you get like a blue solution. All right, if you get a blue solution, then the black solid is copper oxide, then it's basically another experiment altogether. But if you, get, if you add a black solid to a colorless solution and you get effervescence, you get bubbles, all right, then uh, I will, I'm going to suspect very likely it's oxygen gas. I will test for that first. Of course, if it fails, then I'll try and test for something else. What is this something else? I'll probably test for um, carbon dioxide. It could be a carbonate. Uh, maybe chlorine but unlikely i'll talk about chlorine in a while all right okay so for oxygen gas uh, that's how you make it you have a colorless solution hydrogen peroxide and you have a black solid manganese oxide now uh how to make hydrogen gas now in a whole syllabus right uh, to make hydrogen gas we will add a metal to an acid or a very reactive metal to water now unlikely that you go to the chem lab they give you sodium potassium because it's dangerous and you should have some, some student who will do some experiment and then blow up something. So they will most likely not give you sodium potassium, but they probably give you things like magnesium and iron and zinc. And so the, the, that's grey in colour, and you will be given an acid which is colourless. So once again, what to expect, right? Colourless solution, grey solid. Uh, for me, right, the moment I'm given a grey solid and I get effervescence, automatically I'll test for hydrogen gas, alright? It will extinguish a lighted splint with a pop sound. Okay, so recall, um, in, in the chem lab, right, okay, um, to make hydrogen gas, there are only that many ways, either metal and water or metal and acid. Unlikely, you'll be given a very reactive metal, so I'm going to suspect metal and acid. So once you see it's a grey solid, very, very likely it's a metal, bubbles, test for hydrogen. If it doesn't work, then try and figure something out, read through the instructions, um, go back to the drawing board, uh, try something else, okay? Um, Third one. So the third gas we have is ammonia gas. Now, how do you make ammonia gas? In our syllabus, there are two reactions. The first one, alkali and ammonium salt. Second one, test for nitrate. You have alkali, sodium hydroxide, and you add aluminum foil. These two reactions have something in common. And what is that? You want to warm. So when you see the word warm, right? Now, the thing about ammonia is that you may not see effervescence, okay? But the moment you see the instructions, warm, I will immediately test for ammonia gas. Take a piece of moist, red litmus, place it at the mouth of the test tube. If it turns blue, ammonia gas is formed. Another way to test ammonia gas really is the smell. It's a pungent smelling gas. It smells like, I think, urine. All right, so it, it's not a nice smell. So if, you, if, if the whole lab starts to smell of urine, pungent smelling gas, you know it's ammonia. All right, so even if you didn't get it, I would write it down. All right, okay, so that, that is that. Once again, if you're given two colorless solutions and you're asked to warm, very likely, uh, you are trying to get the ammonium ion to react with uh, the alkali or with the aluminum foil, or the nitrate and aluminum foil. All right, okay, so just watch out for that. Carbon dioxide gas, how to make carbon dioxide gas? Carbonate and acid. Uh, sometimes you'll be given a carbonate and you're asked to heat, but unlikely, because the one requires strong heating. So assuming you're given a colorless solution and a carbonate. Now, carbonates in general are white in color, sometimes colored, like copper carbonate is green in color but if not most carbonates are white in color 
so I if I see a white solid add to colourless solution and I see bubbles effervescence I will test for carbon dioxide I will not test for hydrogen because it's not grey hydrogen must is formed when you have a metal and an acid which is a grey solid so if the solid is not grey don't test for hydrogen first test for carbon dioxide test for something else alright okay um, I will test for carbon dioxide of course if the carbon dioxide gas test fails then I'll try something else but that's the first thing I'll do alright okay um, now I'm going to say sulfur dioxide rarely appears for all of our exams because sulfur dioxide uh, in large quantities can cause breathing difficulties so if you have friends with like asthma it can be a bit dangerous alright so sulfur dioxide I don't think will come out alright but if it does come out um, you probably need to use this thing known as sodium sulfide sorry which is a pale yellow solid so if you're given a pale yellow solid and you're going to add it with sulfur with acid all right okay color solution then probably sulfur dioxide but the smell is quite pungent it's a it's a it's a i, I can't describe the smell but it's a, it's a pungent smelling gas as well all right so uh if you get the pungent smelling gas i would very quickly use acidified potassium manganate 7 it will turn colorless so purple turns colorless so here's another thing all right um you see yellow color solid you see color solution you add together and the question asks you to prepare acidified potassium magnesium 7 probably a testing for sulfur dioxide okay unlikely to come out but if it does come out uh, i think it's quite easy to spot because of a few things number one the yellow solid number two you must use acidified potassium magnesium 7 which is not always given in the lab all right okay uh last guess very quickly to talk about this is chlorine gas same thing another one that's not commonly tested uh, why? Because of the reactants. Now, to make chlorine gas, right, we need a black solid. So the same black solid, manganese oxide. We used it for, with hydrogen peroxide. But the other one is concentrated hydrochloric acid. So here, right, you will see the instructions asking you to be careful, uh, make sure it doesn't spill on your shoes or your hands, that kind of thing. It's very, very corrosive. So this will give you hints that it's concentrated acid. So if it's concentrated acid, uh, then I think it's quite clear that the gas that you're trying to make, of course, is chlorine gas. So you have black solid and just now color solution and they don't really warn you about it that's probably hydrogen peroxide if you have black solid and you have uh they ask you to be careful with it it's probably corrosive it's probably concentrated hydrochloric acid then the gas is chlorine uh chlorine gas smells like the swimming pool so it's very very characteristic in nature it will turn your litmus paper from uh blue to red to white here blue to red to white so that's another way to tell for chlorine gas so I hope this gives you a better idea on when to test for gases and what gas to test for. And uh, yeah, see you next time.